the time I have, I'll try to be as focused as possible. And I welcome the speech today, Minister, and I welcome that you've confirmed that the government is confident, just as Deputy Fitzmaurice has said, that the re-wetting targets, you say, the confident that the 2030 and the 2040 re-wetting targets, at a minimum, can be met entirely on state lands. I welcome that. I wel welcome the clarification that flooding is not in question. It has nothing to do with flooding. I welcome the clarification that there are no designation under the Nature Restoration Law no designations there. I welcome the fact that it's confirmed for the record that all of this is voluntary. Uh, and, and I thank you for that. I want to thank my office for the work and also the library for the digest as usual. And I will not be party to anything that seeks to reduce the uh, local farmers' ability, particularly the small farmers, to live in the area and to farm sustainably. And if I have a chance, I come to some of the very good projects that are going at the moment. I'd like to pay tribute to Deputy Mick Wallace, who comes from a small farm and who's gone out on a limb in Europe in relation to this, in, with the assistance from Deputy Claire Daly. And I think it's important to put it on the record. It's nearly five years since we declaimed a climate and a biodiversity emergency. I sat on a council that had a draft biodiversity plan, a draft one for donkey's years, and no biodiversity officer. Your department was starved of funds, starved of leadership from governments and so on. I've said that on the record. And today we stand up on this, and as well as that, in relation to this scheme, there's an emergency break as well, in addition to be voluntary. It's very important that the message goes out around it. Globally, natural areas are under severe pressure due to human activity and it's worsened by climate breakdown. This is almost five years after we declared uh, an emergency, led by the people of Ireland and the children of Ireland. I, I, I haven't time to go into the statistics. We all know them. They're on the record. But what's, what's important to say that nature is in dire straits and requires immediate large-scale intervention to avert extensive species extinction. I mean, the hen harriers have been mentioned as an iconic bird and so on. There's a huge amount of, of deterioration here despite all of the conventions and despite all the targets set. And the EPA, in their wisdom, um, looked at what was driving the loss of Irish habitat species and natural spaces. And they listed out agricultural activity, alien and invasive species, conversion of vegetated land to built land, extraction of resources and forestry. What they left out completely was government policy and EU policy that have turned farming on its head over the years. I mean, the most daft policy was intervention, overproduction, if anything, encapsulated the, the, the tautology of the European policy, it was intervention. That's not mentioned at all by the EPA. Neither is the ele elephant in the room, which is war, an ongoing war. And, and whatever changes we try to make to stop climate change, war has to be stopped, because we can't have the two parallel things that don't go together. Earlier on, the senior minister talked about the tears in his eyes when he saw the trawlers when he was down um, off in Spoffin. I agree with him totally. However, the very good policy to stop the sprat being taken out in unsustainable manner and measures is still going on unabated because of the foolishness of the government in relation to the consultation process they carried out. So again, it's at six years later, they're still taking Sprat out uh, without any, any oversight and no policy in being. The European Bank, that bastion of um, socialism, <laughs> I say tongue in cheek, they tell us when ecosystems are degraded, they stop providing those services so nature restoration can be seen as an economic investment that yields a return. They tell us that for every euro invested in nature restoration, this adds eight to 38 euros in benefits to the society. This is the European Central Bank telling us this. The view, uh, humanity needs nature to survive. And so in the economy, so, and so do the economy and the banks. The more species become extinct, the less diverse are our ecosystems, and this presents a growing financial risk. You know, I, I, I say tongue in cheek, that bastion of socialism, because all of those institutions, including the EU, pushed unsustainable, unsustainable farming, unsustainable living, and now the penny is dropping when we're on the verge of, is it the sixth extinction? 
And that's what it takes. A bit like the war in Gaza to get some action. It takes 30,000 people. I'm going to finish up just by mentioning some of the very good schemes. Just And again, I want to thank the Digest. And I'm sure the minister is very familiar with them. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven laid out. But I want to just finish on the Donu Farming Group, which... Um, had the project has, was set up to control and trial plots in the Midlands to develop clear workable guidelines for transition program to biological farming. And there's a small group, a metal there, of 12 Donu farmers. It's interesting the word Donu, that comes from Thank a female you. goddess, goddess of nature. And you know, Donu, you, Donu I, I just finish on Bonu. Bonu is actually what's happening in rural areas, the depopulation of the Gaeltic areas and the rural areas. So while it's fantastic to have Donu, it's, at the moment, we have Bono, so we need to look at the two. Uh, I'm fully behind you, Minister, in relation to this and would like to work Thank with you.